Hi there. Today, we're embarking on a captivating journey as we step back in time to explore the legendary TV series, Welcome Back, Cotter. I'm sure many of you have fond memories of this classic show. Welcome Back, Cotter is a timeless gem that has left an indelible mark on television history. Join us as we relive the magic, revisiting the series with the entire cast, then and now. We'll uncover the original identities and ages of the talented actors from the show and witness how they've transformed in 2024. So without further ado, let's dive into the world of Welcome Back, Cotter. Number 1. Gabe Kaplan as Gabe Cotter They say laughter's the best medicine, and if that's true, Gabe Cotter is the real deal. With a wit that's as quick as lightning and a charm that's just plain irresistible, Gabe's the go-to guy for punchlines and nailing comedic timing. Once he starts cracking jokes, you won't be able to keep a straight face. It's like a dam bursting with laughter. But Gabe's more than just a funny guy. He's got heart, and he's using his comedic genius to make a real impact on the sweat hogs' lives. As a teacher, he's been right there in their shoes, experienced their struggles, and faced the same challenges. He totally gets it. And that's why he's on a mission to help these kids turn things around. Mr. Gabe Cotter, the unconventional yet well-intentioned character brought to life by the multi-talented Gabe Kaplan, who also happened to be the brains behind the show. Cotter's journey led him back to his old stomping grounds, where he took on the challenge of teaching a motley crew of misfit students. And so, Welcome Back Cotter was born a show that skillfully danced between comedy and the serious exploration of contemporary issues like drug abuse, teen pregnancy, and gang violence. Before Kaplan's foray into acting, the spotlight beckoned him in the world of baseball. However, a stint as a bellhop veered him toward perfecting his stand-up comedy craft. Kaplan's comedic prowess caught the eye, or rather the laughter, of Johnny Carson, leading to five appearances on The Tonight Show. His comedic journey reached its zenith with the release of the album Holes and Mellow Rolls, where he delved into extended routines about his high school days. These musings provided the blueprint for the creation of the iconic character, Mr. Cotter. Kaplan's acting career became synonymous with his portrayal of Mr. Cotter. A later attempt with the series Lewis and Clark in 1981 didn't quite hit the mark, meeting an untimely demise after just eight episodes. An intriguing tidbit. The legendary Groucho Marx was slated for a cameo on Welcome Back, Cotter in its second season, only to be sidelined due to health concerns. Taking a hiatus from acting in the mid-1980s, Kaplan immersed himself in the high-stakes world of poker. Not content with just spectating, he became a poker tournament commentator and even tried his hand, pun intended, at high-stakes poker on GSN. Gabe Cotter played by Gabe Kaplan when he was 30 years old and now he is 79 years old. Number 2. Ron Palillo as Arnold Horshack Who could ever forget the one and only Arnold Horshack? That guy's got a voice that could break glass and gestures so grand they'd put a halftime show to shame. Picture a live wire buzzing with energy, and you've got Arnold ready to electrify the stage with pure, unbridled laughter. Sure, he might not fit the mold of your typical bookworm, but textbooks have got nothing on Arnold's brain. It's like a sponge for knowledge, soaking up everything in its path. The dude's thirst for learning is insatiable, and let me tell you, it's downright contagious. But what really sets Arnold apart is his heart-on-the-sleeve vibe. He's all about vulnerability and sensitivity, and that's what makes him not just a character, but a downright endearing force of nature. Every little gesture, every expression. He's got this magic formula that wraps us all up in laughter and tugs at our heartstrings. Arnold Dingfelder. Horshack, the class clown of the sweat hogs in Welcome Back, Cotter, left a lasting impression in his inaugural major role. Post his success on the show, Palillo continued to make his mark in the entertainment industry, securing guest roles in popular series such as The Love Boat and Chips. 
Throughout the 80s, he frequently inhabited quirky and eccentric characters. Beyond his television endeavors, Palillo was active in movies and sporadically graced both stage and screen. Later in his career, he returned to the theater and took on cameo roles in various sitcoms, as well as lesser-known animated shows like Duckman. Arnold Horshack played by Ron Palillo when he was 26 years old. Sadly, on August 14, 2012, Palillo suffered a heart attack at his home and was taken by ambulance to a nearby hospital, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. Number 3. John Travolta as Vinnie Barbarino Meet the man with looks that could give a movie star a run for their money. None other than Vinnie Barbarino. This guy is as smooth as silk when it comes to conversation, making life look like a breezy walk in the park. His confidence is nothing short of awe-inspiring, leaving everyone around him utterly captivated. Vinny Barbarino, with his stylish feathered hair, emerged as one of the biggest heartthrobs of the 1970s. He portrayed a cocky and funny character, leading the Sweat Hogs with a repertoire of insults. Vinny is also famous for coining the legendary catchphrase, Up your nose with a rubber hose. Interestingly, John Travolta's mother initially had reservations about him taking on the role, fearing he might get typecast so early in his career. She was concerned that playing a dumb New York character might hinder his chances of becoming famous. During his time on Welcome Back, Coulter, Travolta had a role that many people tend to overlook, that of one of the key characters in the chaotic events of the 1976 film, Carrie. Just a year later, he achieved worldwide fame by showcasing his dancing skills in Saturday Night Fever. Then, he solidified his legendary status as the bad boy T-Bird, Danny Zuko, in Greece. Travolta managed all of this while still being part of the Cotter cast, although his early exit from the show for a significant part of season four was prompted by his burgeoning movie career. John Travolta truly became a movie star, and one of his notable roles is in the 1994 film Pulp Fiction, where he and Sam Jackson formed one of the best duos of the 1990s. If you can think of a better duo, feel free to share it in the comments. In 2019, he took on a quirky role in a film titled The Fanatic, written and directed by Limp Bizkit frontman Fred Durst. In the same year, he appeared in Trading Paint and The Poison Rose. Vinnie Barbarino played by John Travolta when he was 21 years old, and now he is 69 years old. Number 4. Marsha Strassman as Julie Cotter When life throws its challenges at Gabe, Julie steps in as his unwavering support, akin to a sturdy oak tree weathering a storm. As Gabe navigates the path of being a teacher at his alma mater, it's Julie who stands firmly by his side, a steadfast presence amid the whirlwind of such endeavors. In the role of a wife, Julie epitomizes the essence of the ultimate companion. She transforms into Gabe's rock, a lighthouse offering stability and assurance. Julie's love and empathetic nature become the secret weapons in their shared odyssey making her not just a life partner but a crucial part of Gabe's support system. As his confidant, loudest cheerleader, and most trusted sounding board, Julie and Gabe form an unbeatable duo. Marsha Strassman began her career in 1964 with guest appearances on The Patty Duke Show. She briefly explored the music industry as a recording artist for Uni Records, achieving success with her debut single, the Flower Children, which became a top 40 hit in many West Coast markets. Despite some unsuccessful releases, she eventually shifted her focus back to acting. Her acting career took a significant turn when she landed the role of Nurse Cutler on the popular TV series, MASH. Following this, she had a notable role in Welcome Back, Cotter. Interestingly, producers initially considered casting Farrah Fawcett for the role but decided against it, citing concerns about the believability of a couple consisting of Gabe Kaplan and Farah. Marcia Strassman expressed some offense at this decision. Farah Fawcett went on to star in Charlie's Angels the following year.
In 1989, Marcia Strassman connected with a new generation of audiences by playing the mother in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. She reprised this role for the 1991 sequel and received praise for her performance in these family films. One of her later notable roles was in the TV spin-off series Tremors in 2003. Julie Cotter played by Marcia Strassman when she was 27 years old. Unfortunately, Strassman died of the disease at her home in Sherman Oaks, California, on October 24, 2014. She was 66 years old. Number 5. John Sylvester White as Mr. Michael Woodman Navigating high school isn't always a stroll in the park. There are rebellious students, the daily chaos that comes with the territory, but fear not because Mr. Woodman is the steady hand at the helm that keeps our ship sailing true. When this man speaks, you better believe you should be all ears. His words aren't mere utterances. They're pearls of wisdom cast before us, his students. He embodies the voice of authority, the North Star guiding us on this incredible journey towards knowledge and personal growth. To Mr. Woodman, our esteemed captain, we extend our heartfelt thanks for your dedication, your wisdom, and for being the guiding light on our educational voyage. John Sylvester White played the role of Vice Principal Michael Woodman on the iconic 70s show, Welcome Back, Carter. While some aspects of the show may be viewed differently in today's standards, characters like Vice Principal Woodman played a crucial role in the series' classic status. Woodman, though not a straightforward villain, functioned as the show's antagonist, and John Sylvester White skillfully portrayed the character's disdain for the Sweat Hogs and Cotter. Before his role on Welcome Back, Cotter, White had a brief career in show business, taking on minor roles in series such as Kojak. Mr. Michael Woodman played by John Sylvester White when he was 56 years old. Sadly, he died on September 11, 1988, from pancreatic cancer in Waikiki, Hawaii, at the age of 68. Number 6. Robert Hegyes as Juan Epstein. Uh, Juan Epstein, the maestro of evading the sacred halls of education. Seriously, he's practically an artist, a virtuoso of scheming, always conjuring up the most creative excuses you've ever heard just to escape those dreaded classrooms. Epstein doesn't just have a few standby excuses. Oh no, he's got a whole lineup of fictional relatives longer than a laundry list. This guy's imagination is like a well-oiled machine when it comes to avoiding the clutches of school. It's almost impressive, the lengths he'll go to. Juan Epstein, portrayed by the talented Robert Hegyes, was a distinctive member of the Welcome Back Cotter cast. Known as the tough guy among the sweat hogs, Epstein took great pride in his Puerto Rican and Jewish heritage. In the 2000s, Hegyes returned to his home state of New Jersey and taught at his alma mater, Rowan University. Interestingly, Hegyes was actually cousins with the famous rock star John Bon Jovi. After his time on Welcome Back, Cotter, Hegyes made occasional appearances on television, often as himself on game shows and primarily focused on stage work. Hegaya's final on-screen appearance was in a 2007 episode of The Singing Bee. He continued to reprise Epstein for nostalgic TV guest appearances and commercials well into the 21st century while enjoying a second career as a college educator. His death from a heart attack in 2012 was a sobering moment for viewers who spent their formative years in the 1970s with Juan Epstein and his education adverse companions. Juan Epstein played by Robert Hegyes, when he was 24 years old. Sadly, on January 26, 2012, Hegyes died from an apparent heart attack at John Kennedy Medical Center in Edison, New Jersey, at age 60. Number 7. Lawrence Hilton Jacobs as Freddie Washington, introducing the smoothest operator and the undisputed fashion icon of Jameis Buchanan High School, the one and only Freddie. This guy's got a style that could give runway models a run for their money and a charm that could make hearts skip a beat. We're talking about the ladies' man extraordinaire. Freddie is the epitome of cool, always strutting through those high school hallways like an absolute superstar. 
His wardrobe is a constant parade of the trendiest threads. You'd swear he just stepped off the pages of a magazine. Lawrence Hilton Jacobs embarked on his career with the 1975 black exploitation film Cooley High, before becoming one of the sweat hogs on Welcome Back, Cotter. Concurrently, he starred in the iconic miniseries Roots during his time on Cotter. His next regular role on a series came in 1989 with Alien Nation, and he portrayed Joe Jackson in the miniseries The Jackson's An American Dream in 1992. Beyond his acting career, Hilton Jacobs ventured into the music industry, contributing vocals to Rick James' 1981 album Street Songs. He continued to pursue film, taking on roles in the Paul Michael drama The Street Sweeper, the comedy Southlander with Rory Cochrane, and the drama Sublime with Jeffrey Anderson Gunter. Additionally, he appeared in the Vita Guerra romantic comedy Tamales and Gumbo and the Vernay Watson Johnson drama Nocturnal Agony. Jacobs most recently acted in 31 2016, Freddie Washington played by Lawrence Hilton Jacobs when he was 22 years old and now he is 72 years old. Number 8. Stephen Shortridge as Bo de la Bar. Meet Bo de la Bar, the friend we all wish we had the one you can rely on, always there with a smile and a word of support. Bo understands the power of a listening ear. When you've got something on your mind, he's right there, ready to lend a sympathetic ear and offer a friendly word of advice. But he's not just about being serious. Bo has a talent for cracking a joke that can brighten even the gloomiest of days. He's the human embodiment of good vibes. In a world often dominated by main characters and their grand narratives, Bo is like a ray of sunshine breaking through the clouds. He brings that much-needed dose of lightheartedness to the mix. You know that feeling you get when a cool breeze hits you on a scorching summer day. That's Bo. Refreshing and uplifting. Here's to the Beau de la Bars of the world, making life a little brighter one smile at a time. Stephen Shortridge stepped into the role of Beauregard Beau de la Bear in the final season of Welcome Back, Cotter, bringing a touch of Southern charm to the show. Despite being introduced as a replacement for Vinny Barbarino, Shortridge played the part with grandiosity to seamlessly integrate with the Sweat Hogs. His presence aimed to infuse new life into the show during its concluding season. Throughout his relatively brief career, Stephen Shortridge primarily focused on television, making appearances on shows such as The Love Boat and Fantasy Island. His last on-screen appearance occurred in the 1989 movie Say Anything. After departing from the entertainment industry in 1989, Shortridge pursued other artistic endeavors. Bo Delabar played by Stephen Shortridge when he was 24 years old, and now... He is 73 years old. Number 9. Vernie Watson as Verna Jean Williams Verna Jean Williams isn't just a student. She's a force of nature. Picture a walking encyclopedia with the uncanny ability to drop knowledge bombs and effortlessly ace every exam. Yes, that's Verna Jean. When it comes to academic excellence, she's the reigning queen and everyone else is just trying to keep up. While her fellow students might occasionally get caught up in all sorts of mischief and mayhem, Verna Jean is the calm in the midst of the storm. She's the North Star, guiding her friends with a level of wisdom and sensible advice that seems beyond her years. In a world that sometimes feels like pure chaos, Verna Jean is the anchor that keeps the sweat hogs grounded and focused. Verney Watson Johnson, a versatile character actress, left an indelible mark on American television with her extensive and enduring career. She is best remembered by a generation of viewers for her role as Viola Vi Smith, the mother of Will Smith's central character in the immensely popular sitcom The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which aired on NBC from 1990 to 1996. In addition to her impactful live-action performances, Watson Johnson carved out a niche as a prominent animation voice artist. Her distinctive vocal talents enhanced various animated projects. 
showcasing her versatility as a performer. Beyond her impressive on-screen and voiceover work, Watson Johnson made headlines in 2005 when she appeared as a witness for the defense during the second trial of Michael Jackson on child molestation charges. This multifaceted career journey reflects her enduring presence and influence in the entertainment industry. Verna Jean Williams played by Vernie Watson when she was 26 years old, and now she is 74 years old. Number 10. Deborah Lee Scott as Rosalie Hotsey Totsey. Deborah Lee Scott, renowned for portraying Rosalie Hotsey Totsey during the first season of the show, became a beloved character at James Buchanan High, especially among the Sweat Hogs. Her performance garnered acclaim, and she achieved significant popularity in this role. Prior to her time on Welcome Back, Cotter, Scott had already left a lasting impact on the entertainment world. Notably, she appeared in the 1973 film American Graffiti, directed by George Lucas. Throughout the 70s and 80s, she continued to take on small yet memorable roles in both movies and television. In the mid-80s, Scott diversified her portfolio by featuring in two installments of the Police Academy film series. However, she gradually shifted her focus to behind-the-scenes work in the entertainment industry, marking a transition in her career. Verna Jean Williams played by Deborah Lee Scott when she was 22 years old. Sadly, in 2005, Scott moved to Florida to live with her sister. Shortly after her arrival, Scott fell into a coma and she was hospitalized. Three days later, on 5 April 2005, she took a nap and died in her sleep. She was 55 years old. As we reflect on the incredible journey of the Welcome Back, Cotter Show cast from 1975 to 1979, witnessing their growth and transformations, it's evident that the bond forged during those years has left an enduring legacy. From thrilling highway pursuits to heartwarming moments, these actors brought the California Highway Patrol to life. Their stories continue to resonate with fans around the world. As we explore their then and now, we celebrate the enduring impact of Welcome Back, Cotter. Thank you for joining us on this nostalgic trip down the California highways with the remarkable Welcome Back, Cotter of yesteryear.